um, only because my Hebrew sucks, as in it's non-existent, as in I don't speak any Hebrew at all. Um, I've, so that's how it's going to fly. If, that's, uh, if anyone has any problems understanding me, I'm terribly sorry. Come talk to me afterward. They'll be more than happy to explain things to you. And take your resumes? Say that again. Take your resumes? And sure, absolutely. Take your resumes. Um, I am I'm here at the behest of my employer, uh, Booking.com. Uh, just want to give a little bit of a plug before, before I get uh, started. But we're looking for Perl developers, I'm sure. I've seen every single one of you walk by the table at some point, so this is what happens. Uh, but uh, we'll have something to say afterwards later, a little more recruiting. I'm just the tech. So uh, let's get started. Um, who here has uh, ever done the smart thing, everyone's going to say yes, uh, and looked at CPAN for when they had a problem to see if someone had already solved that problem before? Everybody, right? Raise your hands. Because if you haven't, then you're doing something wrong. Because people have reinvented wheels probably about 18 times on CPAN vendors. Everyone has a module on CPAN. Um, and the thing, everyone but you. Why are you heckling me? I'm trying to get a talk here. So, um, it, it's a real pain to want to install all of these modules and figure out which one you actually like. Um, so, enter CloudPan and MetaCPan to the rescue. Um, so, let's talk about clouds. Um, who here knows what MetaCPan is? Everybody? Okay. If you don't know what MetaCPan is, uh, MetaCPan is uh, basically an API and also a site um, that's built on top of that API that uh, duplicates the functionality of search.cpan.org but does so in a transparent and free software manner. Um, it also provides uh, a set of uh, like a REST API, JSON API that you can manipulate to uh, basically uh, refer to the MetaCPAN index uh, instead of having to download the O2 packages.txt.gzip and then parse that out. So uh, for any of you tools hackers that are on the tool chain, uh, like the CPAN client, you know what I'm talking about where you have to download a big gzip file and do a bunch of crap to it. Um, MetaCPAN takes care of that because you can directly query the service and say, hey, give me this module, or what is this version, or tell me about this author, or uh, modules that, that do X, Y, or Z or have these keywords. Um, uh, it came about because uh, search.cpan.org is closed, closed source. Uh, no one really has access to it. Um, kind of a black box in how you want things to display on your, on your particular author page or whatever. Um, and they weren't open to the idea of anybody being able to basically poke around the source code, fork it, do anything like that. So, um, so the couple of guys got together and decided that MetaCPAN was the way to go. Way to um, so why use it? Why would you want to use MetaCPAN? You want to support your software. That's why we're all here, right? Free software, open source software, uh, and it drives all of our businesses. We make a whole ton of money doing it. Uh, we like to contribute and give back. Uh, so you definitely want to make use of MetaCPAN. So, how do we use MetaCPAN? Uh, you want to use yeah, CloudPan. So CloudPan is this uh, module that I wrote. Uh, it actually came about during the QA Hackathon last year in Paris. Um, probably the most useless hack ever. Um, because I was working with David Golden on basically integrating uh, MetaCPAN uh, querying into the CPAN client itself. Uh, part of it was is that the MetaCPAN uh, API client is uh, it dependent on like LWP and a bunch of other stuff, and so it wasn't it wasn't lightweight enough uh, and all pure Perl and all within core to be able to make use of it effectively. Uh, so what I wrote was a MetaCPAN API Tiny, which uses HTTP Tiny uh, to basically make the dumb, dumb HTTP requests and query the service directly to be able to get information about modules and stuff. And in the course of doing that, um, I found that MetaCPAN actually has a uh, file API. Uh, part of the API is such that you can just go MetaCPAN slash file, file name. 
and it returns the source to that file. And this is how the functionality works when you go to metacpan.org and you go and you look at the source for a particular module and you get the pretty line numbers and everything else. Um, all of that is driven based on the file API. And so it's like, I got to thinking about that. What if I, what if I wrote an ink hook to be able to load these modules at runtime as uh, as they came as they came up as a, as a, as they were needed, and uh, so this useless hack actually turned into a module, and so this is this is what Cloud Can is. Um, so clouds, how do they work? Um, magic, um, and, I, and I really mean that magic, like the whole ink hook process in Perl is is uh, all sorts of magic. So um, there's three particular ways in which ink hooks work. Um, one of them is by a code ref. So you can, uh, you can basically return a, a uh, subroutine uh, reference that um, basically gets called multiple times. And each time returns a single line of a particular file, and Perl will parse that and make it available to the program, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the other thing you can do is basically do an array ref, which is essentially the uh, code ref, but with context. So you basically give an array reference, uh, but with uh, code reference in the front, and your arguments or whatever else on the side, and that also works. Basically, you just push onto the ink array, and Perl will magically execute these subroutines as it comes across them. Uh, and then you also you can do an object, uh, and I think the, the particular uh, interface for the object is such that uh, I think it's like read or something like that. It's uh, and it basically performs the same function give me back data that I can then parse and then turn it into uh, a working program. So uh, what does CloudPan do? It does the first one. Uh, basically just return a, uh, a uh, file handler to be able to make all of that work. And that's it. So I'm going to actually do a demo now, a live demo of CloudPan working. I tried this at the Orlando Coral Workshop and it failed miserably because of internet. The internet seemed to be working here. so. Uh, sure. so, so bear with me for a second, and we'll uh, let's 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 do a little exploration here. Uh, it's kind of dark, but I think you can get the gist of it. Um, so first things first, develop uh, Who here is familiar with develop Okay, this matter of if you don't know what develop is, you're missing out. Uh, basically, it's it's develop read. Evaluate print loop. Um, it, it gives you a, basically a Perl shell that maintains context and uh, allows you to hold on to variables and do all sorts of things. So you can actually incrementally develop scripts and stuff as you need them uh, and then go back and look in your history later and, and suss it out into an actual script or file or module or whatever. <coughs> um, so the uh, first thing I just want to try is, um, well, what about mode? Do I have mode installed? No, I don't have mode installed. That's silly. Why would I have mode installed? Because mode, if you're unfamiliar with mode, so you have moose, <coughs> and then you have mouse, and then after that you have moo, and then Amy's thing was mo, which is even less than moo, but it's more than m because m is nothing, and so mo is kind of the in between. I would use Moo, but during my installation of this Zilla uh, toolchain, because I had to do some deployments to make sure that this crap worked before I came here, um, it installed Moo because now throwable error is based on Moo instead of Moo, so blah, blah, blah. So we're going to use Moo. Uh, so package, uh, boom. Uh, let's go ahead and use CloudPan. Like, literally, that's all I have to do is just type in use CloudPan. Uh, use Moo. Let's have an accessor called bar. That does nothing. Run that. Now it takes a little bit because what CloudPan is actually doing is going out to MetaCPAN and saying, hey, give me all of the file for, you know, give, give, me, give me Mo. And whatever Mo's dependencies happen to be. So if Mo uses another module, uh, it will actually go and, and recursively fetch all the way down until actually it runs out of things to fetch and your, your script actually runs and loads. So once we have that, uh, you can actually go, oh, hey, look, I want a foo. <coughs> New. OK, I have a foo. Uh, I can 
can store something in bar and I can retrieve it. There you go. It's that simple. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> now for something a little more complicated. Uh, who here has heard of Dancer? <laughs> okay, so I know nothing of Dancer. And unfortunately, we live in the same country as Soil. There you go. This is all we do. So, so I'm going to troll them a little bit here. I actually, I actually know nothing about Dancer whatsoever. But the cool thing about Dancer is that you can actually use it with CloudCamp. And I'll show you. So I can use Dancer. Um, and this will take a little bit because the internet's are really slow. When you're done with that, can you also try Piper? <laughs> <laughs> Piper will not work. And, and, and let, me, let me explain why. Um, because the way that CloudPan works is because it's fetching the raw source of these, of these PM files. Uh, if you suddenly have a module that's dependent upon XS or some other C library or something like that, it's going to fail. And that's because, you know, there's nothing, there's no compilation happening for, you know, anything complicated. And so CloudPan is specifically for pure Perl modules. Uh, and Dancer just so happens to fit the bill. Uh, Mojolicious also fits the bill, and it will also work as well with CloudPan. Um, so, if this were a faster internet connection, this would already be loaded. But we're going to sit here for a little bit, stare at each other uncomfortably. Can you adjust the screens? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Can you adjust? You know, here, let me you need to. Hold on, let me just move it over. Uh, oh, my God. Can you Very much. Does that does that work for you? Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, it's not <laughs> By the way, my my non slides. Uh, that's another piece of indie software called Vroom. It basically turns Vim into a slide presenter. <laughs> um, so if if uh, Andy writes all sorts of weird but useful software, so uh, check check out Vroom if you haven't before. Uh, how long is this going to take? You can tell us about uh, work. Oh, oh, about work. Okay. Um, who here knows uh, anything about Booking.com? Um, so, how to broach this topic here? Um, I have an announcement. It's a small announcement. Uh, we are. We are successfully migrating. We are, we are not quite there yet. Um, migrating from Perl 585. Yes, we were really running a Perl version that old, almost 10 years old. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. To, to Perl 514 too. Um, and uh, yes, so our, our, our entire front end application is running 514 too. Um, and we had a, a number of uh, uh, issues that came up um, on our migration path to be able to make that work. One of them was uh, storable. Because um, we have multiple environments that uh, deal with storable, frozen, and thawed data back and forth. And if we upgraded just one of those environments to 514, we would have problems because it would also write data to NASA. Um, pause. Now let's, let's, let's do something cool. Uh, let's just do a plain get uh, with a sub that says um, turn hello. How about that? Nothing fancy. Let's put a new one in there because I like new ones. Okay. And that. Dancer route. You can see that's, that's what gets returned. And then now let's tell it to dance. Give it a second because the initial fetch didn't quite fetch everything. Uh, running dance probably have to load some other modules that don't know. Um, maybe some required modules or things that aren't hitting the code path yet. There we go. So now, entering the development dance floor. So let me let's see. Yeah. 
here, and we can go uh, local host, uh, 3000, <clears throat> hello world. I know it's really kind of, but, but there you go. <laughs> That said, if you did want to do something ridiculous and write simple scripts that would pull down their dependencies as they were needed, you could. Uh, CloudPan actually has a persistence option. You can basically give it a directory, and it will check whether it can write information to that directory, and it will store all of the modules that it downloads. So that the next time that you run, it will actually check that directory, load the modules from there rather than across the network. This is horribly insecure. Don't use this in production unless you really know what you're doing. Because I will not be responsible for someone doing some DNS hijack on Meta CPAN and your service gets owned. Just not gonna, nope, no, 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 don't do it. Um, that's it. Where does the word cloud come from? It's just fashionable word. I have it personally with all my sentences. Yeah, I mean, I have a cloud laptop. Did you know that? <laughs> By the way, we're in, we're in a cloud room. This is a cloud project. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's that's pretty much the the end of my spiel. So back to my 514 migration. Um, because I'm really proud of some of the stuff that we did. Um, one of them was so storable. We had to, we had to fix the storable problem. How did we fix the storable problem? Well, we decided we needed a better storable. Uh, so we actually wrote uh, a module called Serial. Uh, Serial is a, it provides a binary serialization, uh, basically specification, uh, with a native Perl implementation that we wrote in C. And uh, it basically allows you to throw arbitrary data structures out of it and uh, basically get back a, a binary chunk. Um, it's fast, like if you were, if, I think Stefan has the graphs up somewhere. Uh, probably on the serial page itself, you're going to see the other links. Um, uh, we'll see how this is going to be. So, serial, yeah, S, S E real. Um, So basically, x, the x-axis eval, uh, undub message pack, JSON access, serial, serial snapping, and the graph is actually decoder performance. So basically, uh, how many times per second we can actually do this. And serial just basically squashes message pack and JSON access and storable. Um, and uh, it's fantastic. It works on older versions of Perl, it works on newer versions of Perl, it does uh, all sorts of fancy things. There are even multiple language implementations. Um, uh, we have uh, a naive Java implementation, someone committed a Ruby implementation, someone's working on Python, Go. Um, so this could very well be an easy way to share data structures across language uh, without having to do some goofy like Google's protobuf or whatever, we have to compile everything. Yeah, can you place the relative into protobuf and play facilitation? Um, it depends on uh, whether you enable snappy compression uh, on on web, on how it affects the uh, performance of it. Um, now, I'm just talking generally about the comparison, not just performance. You said that it's uh, more dynamic. Uh, yes, right. That's a big improvement. Yes, exactly. So basically, what it does is uh, lift and. Uh, Requires. Yes, they require pre-compilation, basically. Basically, a class that will read and write those particular structs, and et cetera, et cetera. Serial doesn't have to do that. 
it's basically it just like storable as it will walk the entire data structure and do all of the right things and spit out um, spit out some binary data that you can then decode on the other side. Why is it faster? Why is it faster? Why is it faster than what? Storable? Because storable, unfortunately, likes to maintain a lot of metadata that isn't necessarily important. Um, so let's say let's say you have uh, let's say you have an integer uh, that would normally get stored as, as an IV, you know, in, in, in Perl. Well, if you happen to stringify it at one point, then it turns into like an IV PV or PV IV or something. Um, and right, and then that that whole structure is what's storable and serializes. Um, you can you can make some optimization to make some guesses in serial to basically say, well, really, we just want we can, we can basically store things smaller and not worry about the Perl data structures, but worry about meeting the specification of what we're sending across the wire. Um, that said, it does support things like circular references, aliases. Um, dual bars? Do what? I don't know if it'll do dual bars. It, it, chokes on, it chokes on code refs and a couple of other things, but if you're trying to send a code reference across and load it up to Java, you're doing something. Um, but, uh, right. That would be interesting, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it will sit on cloud, parrot. Oh, I don't think so. Or if we put yeah. this in our mobile app, then we can reconcile <coughs> for the. Yeah. What do you use this for? For the saving things or everything. And all the our, um, our, the, basically the, the way that we track all of our events that happen on the front end, um, all of those get compressed with serial. Um, we use uh, serial in any place where we would you normally use store, essentially, uh, or JSON. Uh, so, big digression. Uh, so we had that problem we fixed it with serial. Um, one of the other problems we had was mod Perl. Um, dealing with recompiling and getting getting mod Perl under 514 doing the right thing with Apache and all of a sudden, and of course doing it on on you know CentOS 5 and then doing it on CentOS 6 and then still ancient. Right. So, so trying to get all of that stuff to work was just, we decided that that we had too much of a business cost to it, uh, and instead opted for, well, let's get rid of mod, mod Perl. Um, so we, we uh, placified our application, uh, ran that under mod Perl first to make sure that everything worked. Then, now that it was placified, we could just take, pick up the web server, throw it away, and take another one and stick it in place, and that's what we did. Uh, we switched to uh, Nginx, and micro WSGI. And uh, that basically gives us a nice little performance boost and uh, more stability under load. And uh, now we're no longer dependent on patching hospital. You got Mason working as well. Mason's working as well. So we're still working on some of our internal uh, office tools and things like that. And what we, uh, to, to basically what we show the hotels for their interface, uh, uses a different stack that we'll use on the main web application. And uh, we're getting closer to finishing it on that too. But we're, we're this close to having everything across the board 542. Big undertaking. Yeah. Considering we have how many millions of lines of Perl? I think I've heard step in port two at least. Two of the lines? <laughs> two million. Yeah. <coughs> two million. Yeah. Uh, two million. But uh, so yeah. Questions, comments? You, I know you want to say something. What do you say? Does Cloud can use the HTTPS interface? No, no, of course not. Why would it? You have nothing to hide. It's just Perl code. Well, using a certificate is a bit more secure, unless the DNS is hijacked like to create another certificate. But, you know. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, there is absolutely zero security in CloudCan. If you want to add it, patches work. Mostly I use it for just 
quick rapid development. I want to try out this module. What does this do? How does this work? Without having to, I don't want to source, I'm lazy, I just want to use the module and see if it works. And, and this, this uh, accomplishes the task very well for me. That's it. Yes.